Why is it that when Elenium makes songs, his chords sound so big and vibrant like this? And when we write the same chords, they just sound dead and lifeless like this. And the answer is Elenium and Kygo and all these major artists don't just write chords. They express them. Anybody, regardless of skill level, can look up on the internet how to write chords and write a decent chord progression. But good artists take a couple extra steps to add expression to their chords so that their chords sound more unique and vibrant. And today, I'm going to show you how to dress up your chords so good that you won't even believe that you made them. So, let's get our chord game 20% better by the end of this video. Let's start with a basic set of triads. Triads are just chords. Every basic triad is made of a root note or the bottom note a minor or major third and a fifth. This is a minor triad when the middle note is closer to the bottom note. And this is a major triad when the middle note is closer to the top note. I'm gonna make a chord progression with a mixture of major and minor triads. I'm gonna take four of these, just lay them out like this. And now I'm gonna rearrange them to try to come up with a chord progression. So I'm gonna take this. That's going to be a minor chord. And then we'll come up with this. So this is a basic chord progression and it just sounds lifeless. It sounds amateur. It sounds dead. Why? The main reason that these sound so lifeless is because they're in root form and nothing about these chords are pretty. It's FL keys, which is a stock sound. Stock sounds are okay sometimes, but we are digital producers and we could do so many amazing things to make these chords sound better. So I went ahead and wrote a checklist of six things that you could do every time you write a set of chords. And if you work through this checklist, I guarantee that your chords will sound beautiful and expressive. So this is the beautiful chords checklist. So we already have a set of chords. Let's go ahead and work our way through the list. Number one on the list is see if there's any way that you could take them out of the root form or the basic form. And you do that by revoicing the chords and inverting them in any way possible. So I like to do is I like to take these middle harmonics and just spread them out to an open position. So I'm putting these middle harmonics up an octave. I find it to be a prettier sound when the leading tone is that third harmonic. The other part of this first list point is inversions, uh, but these chords did not need any inversions, so I'm going to move on to the next step, which is adding voices. My favorite voices to add to chords anytime I can are those voices that you don't have to change. So we could just go all the way through, and these are usually going to be the tonic of the key signature that you're in, and also you could use the fifth as well, which is going to be down here. And it just adds a pretty essence to the chords. Wow! Number three, baby. We're making great time, by the way. Let's go. Pick the right sound. Spend time and energy picking the right sound. That is the number one thing that beginner producers fail to do when they write chords. This is not that good of a sound. It's FL keys for crying out loud. We can do better than FL keys. This is a very minor sounding chord progression. So what I'm gonna do is get a very light and delicate sound because that's just the type of sound that I like. So I'm gonna get rid of FL keys. I'm gonna replace it with my favorite synth in the world, Silent One. Let's initialize the preset. Give us a sine wave. Sine waves are very soft sounds. We can totally run with that, but I don't want to start my song with that. I want to take that sound actually and just make it like a pluck. 
like that. We can add some echo to it. And it just adds that, you know, extra dimension. I'm gonna load up some Fruity Reverb. This is among one of the best sounding reverb plugins in the world. If you don't think that sound is prettier than FL Keys, music production probably isn't for you. So our chords sound good, but why give up here when we could potentially come up with a better result? When we have good chords like this, we have to make sure that we do everything we can in order to make them sound as good as they possibly could sound. So back to the list, try a different articulation. So I copied the original chords and I'm gonna paste them on a different instrument that sounds like this. We have to re-articulate these chords, so I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna try a dotted groove. That sounds like this. Whole different energy than just suspended chords. Now if we play our new articulation on top of our original chords. And now what's cool is we can use either one of these as our main set of chords, or we can use this new articulation to layer the main chords later in the song. It never hurts to have more material. Back to the list, layer them. When layering chords, you have to be mindful of the dynamics of the chords. So these chords are plucks, meaning the trigger is at the front of the note and this is empty here. So we could fill in this space with another layer and I can do that with a suspended sound. If we copy and paste our chords onto a new instrument and we open up a new instance of our synth of choice, I'm just gonna make a suspended pad sound. Let's go ahead and cut it off a little. That sound is very, very basic, but it'll sound very good in unison with our original plucked chords. That is a pretty sound. I'm already thinking if this was a song, we start the song off with these. And then later in the song, this stuff comes in. And we get that nice satisfying transition right off the start. Back to the list, dress them up. Dressing them up is kind of like layering them, but it's also kind of like do whatever you gotta do to the chords to make them sound good and as expressive as they could be. So I have one more pretty sound in mind that I can layer these chords with. Okay, I copy and pasted our chords again. I loaded up a new instance of Silent One. And for this sound, this is gonna be like one of the prettiest little flary sounds you ever heard. This is a saw wave. And we're gonna detune it like that. But I'm gonna open up the attack and the decay a little bit. Let's go ahead and low pass it. Then we'll get that sound. Let's go enlist the help of Fruity Reverb, a little bit of OTT, and I think I'm gonna come back into the synth. I want some higher harmonics, so I'm gonna increase the voices and put this an octave up. You hear how it screams a little bit more now? And this in unison with our original plucks now. And that's it, just by working through our beautiful chords checklist, we went from a boring stock piano to an abundance of chord material that will allow us to express these chords however we want to.
That sounds good. That's why we do these tutorials, because that sounds good. If you want to become a wizard at writing chords and melodies, I just added a cutting edge music theory course to my EDM bootcamp program. My EDM bootcamp program now includes four amazing courses, as well as lifetime access to my inner circle, where you can send me as many of your songs as you would like for unlimited track feedback. If that sounds like something you're interested in, there is a course at the top of the description below. Let's get started and grow together. I'll see you guys in the next video lesson.